What is going on college football fans? Today we're back with another episode of our roster breakdowns and record predictions. We should have two episodes out today, so just a few hours after the Cincinnati video is uploaded, we're going to do Clemson. So both of those will be out today, and both will be added to our playlist, which we already have. I think after these two episodes, we'll be at 11 of these videos out. We're doing all the Power 5, we're doing some Independence, we're doing some Group of 5, and we'll get those done before the season begins. We have this series and a bunch of other college sports content here on the channel. You don't want to miss it, so make sure you guys subscribe, and let's get into our Cincinnati Bearcats record prediction and roster breakdown. So Cincinnati is actually a really fun one. I'm excited to break down this roster with you guys and predict their record because they had a couple of really good years under Luke Fickle, but he is no longer the head coach as he moved on to Wisconsin last season, uh, a year after making the college football playoffs and having an undefeated regular season, um, and then losing to Alabama in the college football playoff semifinal. They go nine and four with a worse roster than they had in the playoff uh, year a couple years ago, which is still, you know, a good year. Nine and four is a solid record on the season, and I think first year in the Big 12, it's going to be harder because they did lose um, a lot of players from last year's team, especially on that really good defense they had last year. They lost a lot of their starting linebackers and DBs. They are returning a lot of those uh, D linemen, which we will talk about because their defensive line is probably the biggest strength on this roster 100%. New quarterback coming in, we have a transfer, Emory Jones, and I cannot believe that Emory Jones is still playing college ball, dude. Like, this dude has been... I don't even know what year it is. It's got to be at least year five for Emory Jones, maybe year six, but he should be the starter um, on this team coming into next year. I, I don't really know what to expect from Emory Jones, and that could play a, a big impact on how many games this Cincinnati team wins, but new head coach coming in, like I mentioned, Luke Fickle has moved on to Wisconsin after a great time at Cincinnati where he was winning a lot of games, really built up this program, and now they bring in Scott Sattersfield from Louisville, who is a good head coach. I believe he only has one losing record uh, season in his entire time coaching at App State and Louisville. Signs like a six-year deal here with Cincinnati, just right up north from Louisville, and that's a pretty good head coach. I mean, considering you're losing Luke Fickle, who is one of the hottest head coaching names out there um, on the market for one of these top brands to go pick up, um, you get Scott Sattersfield, who, you know, if you're going to lose Luke Fickle. That's not a bad get if you are Cincinnati. So I, I really like the hire there. And what's interesting is after having these two really good seasons, although they are losing their head coach and they are losing a few of their really talented players, like their good wide receivers from last year, and, and like I mentioned, some of the defense to the NFL and whatnot, um, they moved from a 9-4 and four season to their over-under win total only being 4.5 this year that's right they don't uh vegas don't don't doesn't think that cincinnati is going to make a bowl this year and, and we're going to see but like i mentioned emory jones starting quarterback i think that's probably one of the biggest weaknesses on this offense i'm not gonna lie like emory jones maybe he could be good but i, I think we're going to get what we usually get from emory jones i think he might run a little bit more than he did at arizona state um maybe back like he did when he was playing at florida um, I think that that is the best way to utilize Emory Jones. I don't think he's that accurate of a quarterback, but I am excited to see him play uh, here in the Big 12. Now, at the running back position, you do have Corey Kiner coming back. He was your running back, too, last year, who, who did play pretty well. So I think that, that is a solid player to have here on your team. And then you also and then you have Miles Montgomery and Ryan Montgomery who can also get some touches there at running back as well. So I really do think this is a pretty strong running back room, and I think it's definitely uh, one of the bigger strengths on this offense. I think the biggest strength on this de uh, team is their defense, especially their defensive line, as I, I slightly mentioned earlier. So they are losing their top two, really pretty much everybody, except I think like one of their receivers from last year. They brought in six transfers uh, at the receiver position this offseason. Uh, the more notable ones, I would say Donovan Ollie from Washington State, six foot three senior. 
I think that he is going to definitely be a starter on this team. You got D. Wiggins, um, a transfer there coming following Scott Satterfield from Louisville. I think that that is going to be a big pickup, and he is going to start in this offense. And then they also picked up who is actually not listed here, but Xavier Henderson, the transfer from Florida, they actually picked up as well. And he's more of their speedy guy, probably going to start there in the slot, I would assume. But this wide receiver room, a lot of transfers, hard to really tell who's going to start considering it's like a completely different wide receiver room from last season. But I do think there are some really talented transfers coming in and they should be fine at this position. I don't really think it's a strength on this team. I don't really think it's a weakness. They should be okay at the receiver position uh, this year. Now their offensive line, I worry a little bit about their offensive line heading into this season where they are making the jump to the Big 12 Conference. They're going to be playing bigger and better defensive lines um, on a game-to-game -game basis. And this is an offensive line that the year of they made the college football playoff. They had like three um, American Conference All-American linemen on their team. And they were expected last season, since they were all returning, to be a really good offensive line. But they just really weren't that great. Now they're losing a lot of that O-line. They did bring in some transfers. Um, a guy from Kentucky came over from the uh off on the offensive line and I do think that that's good that they're making moves there I just think that this offensive line is very unproven and making that jump to the big 12 um, although they do have size um, a few guys who have some really good size I think they have two six eight guys Cam Jones uh, I think he's actually a former quarterback who actually grew to six eight and put on the weight 325 there to become a lineman which is crazy um, they do have some size there. Uh, I worry a little bit about their jump to the Big 12, see how this offensive line holds up. Okay, now moving on to their defense, which I think, like I mentioned a couple times already, this is the biggest strength of their uh, team. Uh, bringing back Juwan Briggs at defensive end. Bringing back Eric Phillips. Bringing back Malik Van. I mean, these are solid, solid guys as your edge rushers and they are also bringing back Daniel Graziziak who is an outside linebacker who does kind of play that stand-up edge rushing position quite often and he can get to the quarterback as well so I'm really liking this defensive line their linebackers are looking a little bit different they do have um, the Sean Pace who is actually listed as a DB that is because he is going to be playing uh, that nickel position that they call it like the star position, something like that. But he's he's kind of going to be all around the field, kind of like a linebacker um, moving around because this defense is going to change with Scott Satterfield coming in. But the reason I love this defensive line, not only are they returning um, a ton of great <coughs> A ton of great players on this defensive line, but Scott Sattersfield at Louisville last year had one of the best defensive lines in the country. I'm not even exaggerating. Like they had, I'm pretty sure they had like the most sacks last season. So he knows how to put pressure, get pressure. He knows how to sack quarterbacks, and and I think that is going to be huge for this team all season long. And, and it's really why I really do like the Bearcats to definitely get more than four and a half wins. Like I think they can hit that five win mark. Um, that that may be one of my best win total overs um, for this season. I, I really like that. I think the Cincinnati team should get more than four wins. Um, although their schedule is pretty tough. It's hard to tell who's going to be good and who's going to be at the bottom of the barrel here in the big 12. But moving on, I do, I, I love this defensive line. Definitely the biggest strength here on this defense. Some other players that I did want to mention is Dorian Jones coming in here at linebacker, who is also going to be Probably their starting inside linebacker. I mentioned an outside linebacker earlier in uh, Graziziak. Um, but Dorian Jones is going to be their main guy on the inside. He is going to be huge for this team 100%. And they also have one DB that I did want to mention in Jordan Young, who is actually a sophomore transfer from Florida, who is going to be a big guy, uh, a big strength on this team. Now, their defense has always been a strength for them the past couple of years under Luke Fickle 
especially those really good DBs that they had with like Sauce Gardner and them boys. The DBs this year, I, I worry about. I think that that is the biggest weakness on this defense, and maybe they're... DBs are going to be better than expected, but they are just unproven to me. Um, I do think that this defensive line is going to have to carry this defense, although, like I said, I could be surprised by these DBs as well. Now, let's go ahead and get into the schedule and record prediction for the Bearcats this season. First year under Sattersfield, first year in the Big 12, huge year for Bearcats football. Let's go over their schedule. So, they start off with Eastern Kentucky. I think this should be an easy win, easiest win on the schedule here for the Bearcats. I'm also going to go ahead and say they beat Miami of Ohio. I mean, the MAC conference is pretty consistently um, the worst or the second worst conference <laughs> in um, all of like the group of five conferences. And Cincinnati should be able to beat Miami of Ohio pretty easily, especially with that defensive line. And really, their DBs should play pretty well against them as well. But their other non-con game, the one that's more 50-50, they have to go on the road to Pitt. Now, Pitt does not have a very good home field advantage, but I do really like this Pitt team this year. I think that they are going to be pretty good, especially on the defensive side, and I do think they have more talent on that team than Cincinnati. And I do like Pitt's quarterback a lot better than I do Cincinnati's. Like Phil Jerkovic, I like a lot more. Then Emory Jones this year, so I'm going to take Pitt to beat Cincinnati here in this non-con matchup. Then they get uh, their first Big 12 game against Oklahoma, who is expected to be really good this year, but they were also expected to be really good last year. Year 2 of Brent Venables. Um, still got Dale, Dylan Gabriel at the quarterback position. Um, still recruiting at a high level, of course, that they are there at Oklahoma. Um, I could see this as actually a trap game for Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma's schedule does look fairly easy um, for them, but I do think that this could be a possible trap game. I'm not going to pick Cincinnati to win, but I am definitely eyeing that up. Like Cincinnati, first Big 12 game. It's a home game for them. The crowd is going to be there to show up for this game against Oklahoma. This is a massive game. I could 100% see Cincinnati being able to pull off a major upset against Oklahoma, especially if Oklahoma comes in there unprepared and, and they underperform a lot like they did last season. I could see that as a very scary game for Oklahoma, but I am going to pick them to still win. But I think it, it's a close one, a very, very close one. Then Cincinnati has to travel to Provo to face BYU, and I'm going to have BYU win that game. I already did the BYU video. If you guys missed it, I have a playlist um, on the series of all the teams that we already did. We are going in alphabetical order. Um, but BYU in Provo really good both new big 12 teams i am going to take byu to win that game then they get a bye week and then they get iowa state at home this game right here is one of the more 50 50 games for me for cincinnati on the year this one i would say and the kansas game are probably the most 50 50 and probably the west virginia game too just because it is in morgantown i think cincinnati is probably the better definitely the better team than West Virginia this year, but because WVU's at home, that one's kind of more 50-50 as well. Iowa State traveling to Cincinnati. Um, I'm going to give Cincinnati this win. Um, I, I think this is a very fun matchup here. Iowa State has been consistently kind of middle of the pack in the Big 12 the last couple of years. Um, Besides that one year where they were more towards the top. And I think they're going to be around that same area. I think they dropped this one to Cincinnati here on the road. And Cincinnati gets their first Big 12 win. Then they get Baylor at home. And I already did the Baylor video. I had Baylor winning this game. I just think it's a tough one here for Cincinnati. Because as good as Cincinnati's defense is going to be this year. I also expect Baylor's defense to get back to what... 
it usually is under a Dave Aranda defense. So I am going to take the uh, Baylor Bears here to win this game. Then Cincinnati has to travel to Oklahoma State and face the Cowboys. And I am going to have Oklahoma State win this game. And as you're going game by game through the schedule, you can start to see like, man, I can see why this Cincinnati team it is set at four and a half wins by Vegas on the season as the over-under. They just play a lot of the, their tougher games um, are at home. I, I mean that like Oklahoma, Baylor, Central Florida, like ooh, Kansas. Like those are a lot of tough games to have to play at home. Even Iowa State is not easy as well. Um, then Central Florida at home. I could see this one going either way. I, I could definitely see this one going either way. And Cincinnati, I do think Central Florida is going to be the better team this year. I, I, I just think Central Florida is going to be the best team uh, in that is going to be a new team in the Big 12 this season. And I think Central Florida needs to have this win here uh, over Cincinnati. So now... It's getting real. Like Cincinnati's three and six. They've only won one Big Twelve game, but they have three winnable games coming up on their schedule against Houston, against West Virginia, and at home against Kansas. These are three winnable games, which if they can win, they can then have four Big Twelve wins on the season and make a bowl game at six and six. They have to travel to Houston. I think Houston's going to be the worst team in the Big Twelve this year. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Then Cincinnati has to face West Virginia on the road. This is no easy task. As you can see, I am a West Virginia fan. But I do think Cincinnati does have the better team on the season and the better defense. And against my better judgment, I am going to say Cincinnati does defeat West Virginia on the road this year. Now, West Virginia wins at home. And I'm trying not to be a homer with this pick because West Virginia is projected to not win very many games this year. Of course, I think that that, that we're going to win more games than expected just because I'm biased. But I am going to say Cincinnati does beat us in Morgantown this year. And then they get Kansas at home for a chance to make a bowl game. And I'm going to go with Kansas. I'm going to go with Kansas in this game. I just think Jalen Daniels versus Emory Jones. I like Jalen Daniels in that matchup all day long. And Kansas has been proving themselves, uh, improving year after year. This year, I think that they um, are definitely going to make a bowl game and maybe even win a bowl game as well. Um, they lost the bowl game barely last year against Arkansas. I think that this one could be a close game, um, maybe a high-scoring game even. Um, it depends on if Kansas defense can improve, uh, but I am going to take Kansas here to win this game. As good as Cincinnati's defensive line is, I think Jalen Daniels can create time uh, in the pocket, run outside the pocket, scramble if he needs to, find time, and like I said, I do think Cincinnati's secondary is kind of weak this year. I think he's going to be able to find his receivers and be able to ultimately win this one in maybe a high-scoring game and a close one. So I do have Cincinnati going 5-7 and seven on the year, and I do have them over the 4.5 mark, but you can definitely see why it is so low. I mean, this is a tough schedule, and uh, first year in the Big 12, new head coach, lost a lot of talent from last year. It's not going to be an easy task, but we will go over this team's ceiling and also their floor like we do with every team. So their ceiling, I do think that it is possible they could beat Pitt on the road. And beat Pitt on the road, that would be a huge win and go a long way uh, this season. I do think they could beat Oklahoma, but I'm not going to. I think that that's kind of a stretch there. I think that they could beat one of these teams as well, like Baylor, Oklahoma State, Kansas. 
or maybe even BYU. I'm going to give them I'm going to give them the Kansas win. I think that this is probably their ceiling like 7 and 5. I don't really see them doing much better than that this season. I think 7 and 5 with this schedule and what they're projected to go would be a huge win on the season. I do think their floor could be losing here to Kansas, losing to West Virginia, losing to Pitt, and probably losing to Iowa State as well. I'd say something like I think three and nine might be their floor. Like they it is definitely possible they could go three and nine on the season this year. You could argue Houston could beat them on the road, but I think if Houston beats them, they could get a win, you know, at BYU or at home against Iowa State, um, something like that. They'll get a win somewhere uh, if they do lose to Houston. But I'd say their floor is probably 3-9. and nine. But ultimately, I am going to have them here at 5-7 and seven this year. Let me know what you guys think Cincinnati's record will be this season. And stay tuned because just a few hours after this episode gets uploaded, we will have our Clemson video up as well as two uploads today in this series and on sunday which is tomorrow as i'm uploading this we should have our next episode out as well so we are going to push out these videos a lot in this series a bunch of other college sports content here on the channel as well so make sure you guys subscribe road to 5k let's get there and thank you so much for watching